What is up everyone? My name is Ross and if you're new here and you want to learn more about Photoshop, photography, and other various forms of multimedia witchcraft, I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button down below today and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss a thing. Now before we get into the tutorial, before we get into the tutorial, I want to make a call out to you guys and say if there's anything that you want to learn, anything at all, leave a comment below because hey, I don't bite and I want to help you guys. Okay, with that out of the way, let's hop into Photoshop. Today, I want to go over my method to match any color in Photoshop, any specific color, and it's in three steps. We're kind of skipping the first step, but obviously the first step is you would make a selection of your color, and then the next two steps are just matching the color and matching the luminance of the swatch or whatever you're referencing. So I'm going to show you, because I'm from the great state of Wisconsin, I've got this lovely image of Giannis of the Milwaukee Bucks, and I'm going to match the colors to a Badger Red, a Green Bay Packers Gold, and a Retro Milwaukee Brewers Blue. That is a mouthful. Say that five times fast. So I have this image already done, but we're going to start from scratch, and I'm going to show you this is what the red looks like, this is what the gold looks like, and this is what the blue looks like. And you can see with the gold, uh, one thing to note with this method, anything that is on the e either end of the spectrum, so taking this dark Milwaukee Bucks jersey to a lighter gold color is kind of tricky in two senses. Uh, one, this image isn't very high quality, so you can see some artifacting. And two, it's just kind of tricky in general to take a dark color and push it to the lighter end of the spectrum and vice versa. If I had started with a light color image uh, as a source and try to push it to a dark end of the spectrum, you're going to get some artifacting. But we're going to go over some tips and tricks on how to make that less painful. Um, and kind of make it blend more seamlessly. So with that out of the way, I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to leave everything in here, though. There's swatches and all this stuff. And like I said, I've already got the the, the selections pre-made to save some time. So I'm going to hop over here into my channels, and this is where I've saved my selections. If you want to learn how to make selections and how to save them and how I typically do that, let me know below. It's a video that I've put off because, quite frankly, I am terrified to make it. Just because I, I want to make sure it's good and it's full of information, all the right information, and quite frankly, I think it's going to take me a while to just sort out um, my method, because I never select anything the same way twice, and that the truth. Okay, let's get into this. I'm going to load one of my selections. I've got full jersey, just his top, and his shorts, and the way I'm loading these selections, let's reiterate, I made these selections prior to save time, but with them saved in the channels, I can just command click any of them and it's going to load the selection for me. So then I'm going to hop back over to my layers and I'm going to go adjustments, new solid color adjustment layer. And all I'm going to do is click on one of my source swatches or the color that we're going to match to. I'm going to load that and hit OK. Perfect. We are done. I am just kidding. Stop that, Ross. You're not funny. <laughs> okay. So now that we have the color in a solid color fill layer, all we're going to do is change our blend mode to color. And most people would stop here, but I am wiser than that. What is important when you're matching any color or any composite and you're trying to match tone and color and all that, you need to match the color and you need to match the luminance value. And if you want to be very particular, you want to match the saturation too. We're only going to color the, cover the color and the luminance today, but maybe in a future video when I'm talking more about compositing, I will show you all three methods and how it will bring a composite together seamlessly. So like I said, most people would stop here, but we want to match the luminance levels as well. So what we're going to do is command click our layer mask over here to load that selection again. This is going to save us some time. And then I'm going to go new adjustment layer, and I'm going to actually add a levels adjustment layer. I'm going to drop that below our solid fill layer by hitting command left bracket, and that's going to drop it below in the layer palette over here. So now we have our color set to color blend mode. So if we're dealing with luminance, we want to set our curves luminosity layer to luminosity blend mode. So we're going to drop this down to luminosity. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the V key to bring up my move tool. And I'm going to just click on this icon. And actually, I'll show you. The way that this works is I have auto select checked up here in the layer. So if I click on anything, it's going to auto select the layer, even if I'm not on that layer, and move it around. So with the V, T, v key hit with the move tool active, God, I talk in a weird way sometimes. I'm just going to move this right on his numbers so that we kind of have an easy reference right on top of our, our color here now. So with that now done, I'm going to add a new black and white 
color, no, black and white adjustment layer on top of everything. The reason why I want to do this is because it gets rid of all the color information. All of it. It goes bye-bye. This way we can only focus, or this is the way it's easier to only focus on the luminance values within our image. So with that now active, on top of everything, mind you, make sure your swatch is also on top of everything, but below that black and white adjustment layer. Go back down and activate or click on your levels luminosity adjustment. And I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Basically, we want to match the the tones here. So we want his jersey to pretty much match what the tone of this uh, color swatch is. And the way we do that is we just kind of move this stuff around. You'll see if I drop this, it makes it lighter, makes it darker, vice versa. So in general, I think I want to go a little bit lighter. And if you think the highlights are a bit too bright too, you can drop those by pulling these down and vice versa. If you thought the, the shadows were too dark and you needed to lighten those, you can pull up the black point. And actually that's looking pretty good. I might drop the white a little bit more and pull this down just a wee bit. So this is the moment, this is the reveal. If I turn the black and white adjustment layer off, this is what we have. And quite frankly, that's pretty freaking good. <laughs> I'm going to show you a before and after. I'm going to sh actually show you what the difference that levels adjustment layer made. This is without it. It's actually looking pretty good, but it's it's kind of, it's not totally true. Um, and if this seems too hot or too lightened, you can obviously play with the opacity. I might drop it a little bit just to bring back some of those shadows. And that's how we would do the red. Now, the next edit we're going to do is that yellow, that tricky, pesky yellow. And the reason why this is so tricky is because, once again, we're taking a very dark color and we're trying to shift it to a very lighter tone. I'm going to group these just for the time being. Red 2. Let's see how close I was to my other one. See, this, my original one, I didn't pull up those shadows too much, but in my opinion, those are too dark. This edit looks much, much better. Anyways, I digress. I get distracted sometimes. You just got to slap me up. So we're going to move on to our yellow. I'm going to open this up and command click this again just to load that selection. Once again, go new solid color. Click on our swatch. Change the blend mode to color. And looky here. We have a lot of work cut out for us to match these luminance levels. I'm going to once again move this right on top. Activate that black and white. Command click once again to load the selection. And then do a new levels adjustment layer. Now, once again, we want to make sure that the levels adjustment layer is below our color. So we're going to do that, and we're going to move it by hitting Command, left bracket to drop it below. And then we're, right now we are on, excuse me, the layer mask. We want to make sure that we're on the actual adjustment layer. Now we can start playing with this. I'm going to zoom back in. Once again, this is the tricky part, but all we need to do is match the luminance value to match that gray. And obviously it's a lighter color gray, so I'm going to pull this... To the left, I'm, I think I'm going to have to pull this up. This black point's got to come way up. And you can see I hit a threshold here where I went too light, and you can see the edges. Now this is definitely appearing too dark or darker. We want to blend it so that those, those edges just disappear. And you can see it happens there. Now it's okay. I know this is the lighter part of the image, so we have a little bit of the edge here. But I think this is looking pretty good. Now this is the moment of a reveal. I can guarantee it's not going to look good. But I'm going to turn the black and white off. And oof. I mean, it's not terrible. Once again, my selection wasn't the perfect selection, but also, and another thing is my image wasn't as high a quality as I would like. This actually doesn't look too bad, but the way that I would tweak this even further is we're going to double click on our fill layer here, and that's going to bring up our layer style and blending options dialog box. I'm going to move it right over here. What we want to do here is, me in particular, I want to bring back some of the shadows because this looks too flat to me. The way we're going to do that is using Blend If. And if you've not seen my other tutorials on it, I'll put a video or a link or whatever the hell the kids are doing these days up above. But essentially, if we hold, I think it's Option or Alt on a PC and click, we can basically separate these points. I'll just show you. I'm not going to Option click it. I'm just going to drag it and I'll show you what it does. You can see... It's pulling the color out, and actually I misspoke. I'm going to cancel out. I don't want to do it on the color. The color is fine. We want the color to cover the entire area. I actually need to do this on the luminosity layer, so I need to do it on my levels layer. And I'm going to just show you. I'm not going to feather this at all. I'm just going to click and drag. And you can see the blend if, if I'm on underlying layer, it's basically saying, hey, blend this layer with the layer below except in these areas. And because I'm targeting the shadows, it's saying, hey, blend in these areas but not the shadows of the layer below. Now, obviously, this looks like garbage. This is donkey dick. So what we need to do, 
Wow, that's colorful language. <laughs> we need to option or sorry, yeah, option or alt click and separate these. And you can see it feathers it. Now this looks much better uh, somewhat. It, it's kind of brightening the image up again. So I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to command click this again to load the selection. And I'm actually going to add another levels adjustment layer and do the same thing. I actually need to move this swatch over here and turn this black and white back on. Because sometimes you just need to layer things up in Photoshop to get your desired result. So I'm going to do this again, make sure I'm on my second levels layer. I'm going to brighten it again just a wee bit. And I don't want it to affect those highlights so much. I'm going to drop it down. Is this, let's see. Mm, I don't even know if this is going to look good, but we're going to see. You can see it's tricky when you have those uh, those lighter to darker colors or darker to lighter colors. Once again, I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to blend this, blend if this again. Let's stretch that out a little bit. So one thing I'm going to also do on this is I'm not liking the shadows here. They are too dark. Um, what I would probably do, let's just do it. Command click, go, let's do color balance. Basically, I would want to go into the shadows and warm up those shadows. Why is it doing that? That is dumb. Maybe I need to be in midtones. What the hell is going on here? Go on top. Oh, there we go. Make sure. So all I did, <laughs> I was below my color layer, and that was foolish of me because obviously when color's on top, it's going to affect everything below Ross. Um, <clears throat> so I just hit Command right bracket. Basically, I just moved it above, and now I can finally see. <laughs> what I'm doing here. I don't want to tweak it so much because obviously I'm getting too orange here. But once again, I'm just going to do the opposite now. Now I want this to stay in the shadows, but I don't want it to affect the other area. So I'm going to pull this down from the left and show you. I don't know if you can see that, but it's basically pulling it out of our highlights and only applying it to the shadows. Once again, I'm going to option click to split this and feather it. And right there, I think we're going to call it a day. I'm going to hit OK. So this is our gold. We're going to call it gold two. Let's compare this edit to what I did earlier. Uh, I don't know. Once again, I think I like my second edit better, but who knows? Who knows? Okay, our third and final one. This is probably the easiest one uh, because it matches pretty similarly. We're going to do the same thing. Command click to load that selection. New solid color. Click on our swatch over here. Change the blend mode to color. I hope you're staying with me. And honestly, this is looking pretty good, but because I am OCD, I'm just going to check this. It's too dark. I can tell it's too dark right off the get-go. So we need to lighten this once again with a levels adjustment layer. Levels, drop it below with command left bracket, and start affecting those tones. Let's see how we did. That is looking spectacular. Look how quick we did that. Just that quickly, we did this. Now, that's how we do it with a dark color going to a lighter color. As I said, the things that are going to matter are the quality of your image uh, and how drastic that push is. Because if you're going from very dark to very light, you're going to have artifacts. I think even with the highest quality image, you're probably going to have some artifacts. One thing I will note, if you're doing this professionally, if you need to... Uh, match a color swatch to many shirts or a wall color or whatever, I highly suggest you do this on like a neutral gray. And the reason why that is is because when you're working with neutral gray, uh, it's very easy to push and pull that to the darker spectrum or the lighter spectrum um, on the scale, especially dealing with color. Because like I said, there's two things that really factor in. Technically, there's three things, but in, in terms of this tutorial, all we need to focus on is the color and the luminosity. And honestly, the color is usually the easiest part because you have that source swatch or that source material to begin with. All you need to do at that point is to match the luminance level, which is where it gets tricky. So I highly encourage you to give me a thumbs up and let me know what you want to learn about next because, listen, people, I want to help you. Whew. That was a long one. I hope, I hope you learned something from it. If there's a different method that you know about, share it below. I'm willing to learn more, as we all are. Once again, my name is Ross. I hope you learned something, and I will catch you cats next time.